بسم الله الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته Welcome back to Tajweed Made Easy This is your brother Abu Muhammad Inshallah in today's lesson we're going to look at the mistakes that people make when they recite the Quran and also the rulings on making these mistakes On the board I've written the word Allahn Okay, Allahn is one of those words that have a general meaning which is the linguistic meaning and an applied meaning, a specific meaning and the general meaning of the word lahan, or one of the meanings of the, of, uh, the word lahan, it carries different meanings. But one of the meanings, okay, according to how most Arabs understand, is it's a mistake. Okay, mistake or t to deviate from what's correct. So for example, if I said lahan Muhammad, Muhammad made a mistake. Now the word lahan, the applied meaning, obviously applied in this context, it's, in this context, it's uh, the group of uh, scholars in the Quran, the sc scholars of the Quran, it means uh, a mistake in the recitation of the Quran. So lahan means mistake. Now the mistakes when reciting the Quran are of two types. Number one, al-lahn al-jali, okay? Which is translated to clear, obvious mistake. And al-lahn al-khafi, the hidden mistake. Now, why is this called clear and obvious mistake? And who is it clear and obvious to? It's clear and obvious to the scholars of the Quran and the students and also, most of the common Muslims would know, what, would, would, would be able to recognize these mistakes. Why is that the case? That's, the, that, that's because the clear obvious mistakes are very recognizable, and at the same time, they might even change the meaning. Okay? So what's the definition of this type of mistake? It's a mistake in the pronunciation by changing the base of the word, whether it changes the meaning or not. Or not. So if I have a word here, if I take one of the letters out and replace it with another letter, then I've changed the base of the word. If I have a word here, okay, the three letters, if I added another letter to it, I've changed the base of the word. If there's a, if there's a word, there's three letters, if I took one of the letters out, then I've changed the base of the word. Th that's an example. Another example is when I change the vowels, Fatha, Kasra, and Dhamma. From Fatha to Kasra, Kasra to, uh, from Fatha to Kasra, or Kasra to Dhamma, okay, then I've changed the, the base of the word. So this is what lahn al-jali is. Whether it changes the meaning or not, it's still considered as obvious, clear mistake that needs to be corrected. Number one, okay, examples in the letters. If I say alhamdu, alhamdu, okay, as how it should be pronounced with a ha, alhamdu. If someone changes the ha into a ha and says alhamdu, alhamdu lillahi rabbil alameen, then this person has made a lahn al-jali, a clear obvious mistake. Okay, because the base of the word has, has been changed. Okay, ha was uh, taken out, and instead of ha, uh, the person put a ha. So this is considered lah as lahn al jali. This particular example does not change the meaning, okay, but it's still considered as lahn al jali. Sometimes when we change the letter to another, when you change a letter on a word to another letter, then it changes the meaning. This lahn al jali, which is even worse, okay, which is even more serious. For example, Allah says in the Quran, Wadkuru. إِذْ كُنْتُمْ قَلِيلًا فَكَثَّرَكُمْ Remember, when you are few, okay, and Allah increased you in numbers. فَكَثَّرَكُمْ with the tha. If someone changes the tha into a seen, this happens, especially in the Sham area. They change, okay, when they speak the, the Arabic, tha to a, to, a, to a seen, okay. So if someone says, وَذْكُرُوا إِذْ كُنْتُمْ قَلِيلًا فَكَثَّرَكُمْ With a seen, كَثَّر means to break. So it's, it's the person saying, okay, remember that you are few and Allah broke you. May Allah not break us, but increase the numbers of the Muslims. So here, this just cha this changes the meaning. Other examples, there's so many different examples. Okay, and from some of these other examples are, one of the, day, one of the names of the Day of Judgment is Yawm Al-Talaq, the Day of Meeting. Allah says, لِيُنذِرَ يَوْمَ Talaq to one of the Day of Meeting. If someone changed the ta, ta, talaq into a ta, just making the ta heavier, ta to a ta, talaq, it means, it means divorce. So to warn them of the day of divorce. So this is considered as lahn al jali. The second example of lahn al jali is changing the vowels. Fatha kasa, dhamma. Alhamdu, dal has a dhamma. Alhamdu lillahi rabbil alameen. Instead of saying alhamdu lillahi, if someone says alhamdi lillahi, 
Alhamdulillah, it's grammatically incorrect. Okay, first, okay. This does not change the meaning, okay, but grammatically, it's incorrect because this is a single noun, a single noun. When they start a sentence, okay, it should be in a mafu'a form, in a dhamma form, yeah. So, Alhamdu, they say Alhamdulillah, or Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. So, this grammatically is incorrect, but it does not change the meaning, so this is considered as Lahnul Jali. Or Bismillahi Rahmani Rahim, Ar Rahmani Rahim. These are two attributes of Allah. Ar Rahmani has a kasra, and Ar Rahim should have a kasra. Any attributes are together, they should both okay, follow the same rules. So, if someone says Bismillahi Rahmani Rahim, or Bismillahi Rahmani Rahim, this does not change the meaning, but uh, because it's grammatically incorrect, okay? So this, this, this comes under Al-Lahnu Al-Jali, okay? Now, if we change the haraka, Fatha Kasat al and this changes the meaning, obviously this mistake is Lahnu Jali, which is even more serious. For example, Sirat al An'amta Alayhim, we say, okay? Guide us, okay, to the, to the, to the, to the path that you're pleased with, Allah, okay? The path that you're pleased with, An'amta, you, Allah, that you're pleased with. If someone says Sirat al Ladina An'amtu, the ta, you change it, the fatha to to dhamma, an'amtu means it means guide us uh, it means guide us to the to the path that I'm pleased with. If you use the an'amti, okay, referring Allah to a female pronoun, this is considered lahn jali that changes the meaning. Ihdina sirat al mustaqim, ihdina is from hidayah, guide us to the straight path. If someone says ahdina sirat al mustaqim, this this is from hadiyah, present, to give a gift. So give us a gift in the straight path. So what's the ruling of making these types of mistakes? Okay, the ruling is that it's haram. Okay, it's not allowed to make to make these types of mistakes. Okay, now an important note. Okay, here yeah, is that all the ulama they have agreed that a mistake, lahnul jali, that changes the meaning in Surah Al-Fatiha. We're talking about specific surah, and a person knows. Okay, and does not correct. It's not corrected. Okay. A person knows, just being heedless, then the salah becomes invalid, okay? The person's salah is invalid, okay? Because they're not reciting it properly by, by making lahnul jali that changes the meaning. Obviously, if someone doesn't know or is in the community, okay, that does not, that, 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 um, this type of knowledge has not reached them, okay, they, they can lead each other in salah, but a person knows cannot pray behind them, okay? So these are lahnul jali. So this is what lahnul jali is. Now let's go to the next... Uh, uh, to the next uh, type of mistake, which is lahnul khafi. This is mistranslated to minor or small mistake. This is not the case. It's not minor nor is it small. It should be translated to as hidden mistake. Why is it called hidden? And who is it hidden to? Okay, it's hidden because the scholars of the Quran and the students they know this type of knowledge, and most of the Muslims do not know this type of knowledge, okay, some of the Muslims, some, just some, might know some of the rules, okay, but most of the Muslims do not know these types of mistakes. So what's the definition of, of uh, this type of mistake? It's a mistake in the pronunciation due to not following the trans transmitted rules of Tajweed from the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu This does not change the meaning, nor does it change the base of the word. What does this mean? For example here, we have the ayah, the word in the ayah, al fusikum. When Nun Sakina emits a fa, what was transmitted from the Prophet Muhammad is that he did not make the Nun clear. He did not say an fusikum. If I say an fusikum, you heard the n sound, right? You heard the Nun. The Prophet made ikhfa. Okay, we'll talk about the rules of Nun Sakina uh, later on. But he made ikhfa here, which means he hid the Nun. Al fusikum. Al fusikum. Instead of saying an fusikum, he, he said al fusikum. He hid the Nun. Okay, so here, this does not change the meaning. So if someone says, Wafi an fusikum, okay, this does not change the meaning, but that's not how the Prophet ﷺ recited, that's not how it was transmitted from the Prophet Muhammad. ﷺ. And this does not change the, the base of the word, okay, we do not remove anything or, or change any haraka and so on, okay. Here, uh, the word was sama'i, was sama'i, was tariq, for example, the Prophet ﷺ, this type of mad, he used to stretch it to four or five counts. Four or five counts. So if someone just stretches the two, two counts and says was sama wa tariq, the meaning is not affected. So the meaning is not changed, but the person is not reciting according to how the Prophet Muhammad recited. Okay, according to how it was transmitted from the Prophet Muhammad So the meaning is not affected. The base of the word is not changed. So what's the ruling of making these mistakes? All the ulama they agree 
that these types of mistakes, we should do our best, okay, to remove them as much as we can. But they differed. If these types of mistakes, do they come under, under makruh or haram mistakes? Is it disliked or haram? So a group of them, they said that it's makruh, it's disliked. A group of them is still considered that these mistakes as well as these, they're haram to make. Now, inshallah, we're going to uh, quickly go over why they say it's uh, makruh and why, why the other groups say it's haram. Those who say it's, it's makruh, they say that it does not change the base of the word. We're still saying all the letters, all the harakah, but we're just not saying it properly the way it should be, it should be said. And the meaning does not change. And to say that it's haram, okay, it will be very difficult upon the ummah. Okay? Because most of the ummah, most of the Muslim communities, most of the Muslims, okay, they do not know these rules. And to say that most of them are committing haram, they mis reciting, this is a bit heavy. Okay? This is it's, it's, uh, heavy words. Okay? It's very serious statements. So this is what, what they say. But the other group, the ulama, those who say haram, okay, they base the, the opinion, the opinion on, uh, on, on certain evidences. They say that what was transmitted from the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu okay, with chains which are mutawatir. Mutawatir means in succession so many different chains that you, it cannot be called a lie because so many people narrated from the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu so many chains, it describes everything, okay, when the Prophet Sallallahu recited. He did not, not just say he did a fatha in this word, he did, uh, he did a kasra in this letter or dhamma here. It, it describes how the nun sakin, okay, just here, he did ikhfa when nun has a, has a fa, for example, or the mim sakin, or certain letters he, he made it heavy, other letters he made it light, okay, certain places he stretched the, the meds and so on, and so on, okay. So the, the description of how the Prophet Sallallahu recited, is in full, okay, so we shouldn't just take Fatha as a Dhamma part, the chain but we should take the whole package. And they also say that the ayats, okay, and the Quran and the Sunnah, when it refers to the Quran, it refers in an obligation manner, an, an obligatory form, an, an obligation, okay, it generally means that it's oblig a, a commanding form, and a command generally means that it's ob 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 obligatory unless there's evidence showing otherwise. For example, Allah says, وَرَتِّلِلْ قُرْآنَ تَغْتِيلًا and recite the Qur'an with tartil. So Allah is commanding the Prophet ﷺ first and all of us to recite the Qur'an with tartil. And tartil means making every letter very clear, okay? By reciting with tajweed, of course. Another ayah, Allah says, فَإِذَا قَرَأْنَاهُ فَاتَّبِعَ قُرْآنَ Allah is telling His Messenger, when this Qur'an is recited to you through Jibreel, then follow the same recitation, okay? Another ayah, Allah says, الَّذِينَ آتَيْنَاهُمُ الْكِتَابَ those who have been given the book, they recite it with this true recitation. Okay, obviously recitation and application and applying the words. But, okay, they say that here from this ayah, okay, they say that a group of people are reciting it properly and applying, of course. Okay, and a group of people do not do that. And in the Sunnah, when Ibn Masood was in Kufa, he heard a man reciting from Surah Al-Tawbah, إِنَّمَا الصَّدَقَاتُ لِلْفُقَرَاءِ وَالْمَسَاكِينَ The word fuqara'i, Okay, the mad in the word in the ra here is similar to that type of mad. Okay, was samai should be stretched four or five counts. So uh, when the person recited, he just did two counts. Inna al-sadaqatu lil-fuqara'i wal-masakin. So when Ibn Mas'ud he heard this, he stopped the person and he said to him, "That's not how the Prophet ﷺ recited." Then the the person says, "How did the Prophet ﷺ recite Ya Abdul Rahman?" And the Mas'ud, Ibn Mas'ud recited the ayah again by stretching the word fuqara'i to four or five counts. So um, they say that, okay, the, the, the word fuqara did not change the meaning. But why did Ibn Mas'ud correct the person and told him off and told, and, and told him that that's not how it should be and so on, unless the, this, the recitation is obligatory and so on. So whatever the situation is, it's makruh or haram, what should the common, the general Muslim like you and myself, what should we do? We should do our best to correct, as, uh, to remove the lahnul khafi as much as we can. As many as we can, okay, we should try to remove them as much as we can. In the lahnul jali, remove all of them, inshallah, and lahnul khafi as, mu as much as we can. And it's very, it's not easy to remove every single mis mistake because there's so many different mistakes. Even some famous reciters and imams, they make, they might fall into this because they forget and so on but we should remove them as much as we can. So today we looked at the lahn, the word lahn, the mistakes in tajweed, the different types and the rulings. Inshallah, in the next lesson, we're going to look at the maratib al-qira'a, the speeds of recitation. Until then, jazakumullah khairan, wassalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.